At the start of episode nine of 90 Day The Last Resort, we see Oswello getting his pump on in the gym and Molly is walking alone because Kelly left and they broke up in the last episode. Molly obviously stayed at the resort so that she could play the victim in front of the other broken toys one last time. Cutscene to Kalani, she's bringing Liz a drink at the pool and Liz says to the audience that she's really bummed that her and Kalani haven't spent more time together because she's very drawn to Kalani's energy. Liz goes on to say that both her and Kalani have been hurt by their dudes in the past, so right now she just feels like Kalani needs someone to talk to about her relationship problems and that's her. I think part of the reason I can't forgive him is everybody only knows about this one thing. But the same Lord. Oh yeah. He's cheated on me throughout our whole entire relationship. Okay, so this is Liz's first time hearing that Oswello has cheated on Kalani throughout their entire relationship, and when she hears this news, she is shook. Kalani then informs Liz that Oswello cheated in the beginning, he cheated when she was pregnant, he cheated when she was doing his paperwork to bring him over to the United States, and about a year ago, he was cheating with multiple girls on social media. I don't want peace. I want problems, always. So messed up. There were so many times that Kalani should have broke up with Aswelu. I'm surprised that she stayed with him as long as she has. Kalani goes on to further explain and try to justify why she took the hall pass. She says, it's not like I took the hall pass for one incident of cheating. There were multiple incidents. And Liz says, you were literally broke down. Kalani can't help but laugh at how speechless Liz is after telling her this information. Aswelu is a piece of right now in my eyes. I would already be planning as obituary if I was in Kalani's shoes, let's put it that way. <laughs> nah, don't try to get all true crimes on us, Liz. You're Ed's doormat. You would probably apologize to him if he cheated on you. And that's why I like can't get him out of the friend zone because this last one, I was like, that's it. First of all, he's lucky he's even in the friend zone. I if that's exactly what's going on, he's lucky to even have your friendship right now. Mm -hmm. I agree that Oswello is lucky to have Kalani in his life, even if that's as a friend after cheating on her 12 times. However, this is a show about couples repairing their relationship, and neither one of them have put in any serious effort to repair their relationship the past eight episodes. For Kalani, I get it, you're disgusted by this man, and you can see that by how you always look annoyed when you have to speak to him or spend time with him or go to therapy sessions with him. I get it. However, your spot on this show could have went towards a couple that actually wanted to repair their relationship and put in the effort to do so. So I think that that's the problem that the majority of the audience has with y'all. And then this morning, I see him open messages and he's like side-eyeing me and watching what I'm doing, but then he's like going this, like this, deleting messages. I see why Kalani's mind went to the worst place given Oswello's history. It's very possible that he was deleting messages with girls that he was trying to sleep with. Kalani then says to the audience that she feels like Oswello is still sneaky, but he hasn't learned how to be successful at being sneaky. I'm just gonna cut her off right there. He hasn't learned how to be successful at anything. Before we continue reviewing this dog water TV show, I'd like to tell you about today's video sponsor, Lily's Garden. Lily's Garden is a free to play mobile game that you can download on both iOS and Android devices. Lily's Garden is a phenomenal match to puzzle game with over 10,000 relaxing puzzle levels and mini games, and an additional 40 are added every single week. And how the game works is you match and collect the flowers and the puzzles to earn the stars, and those stars are used to design and renovate gorgeous gardens in your own creative style. But my favorite part about this game hands down is the story because it's a telenova with a lot of twists and turns and if you like all the relationship drama that we review on these shows you're gonna really love the relationship drama within this game besides lily will need your help to navigate a new romance discover the joys of garden related puns and to uncover the secrets of her late aunt mary's life i usually play lily's garden at night when i'm trying to unwind after a long day of work solving puzzles really helps my brain relax download lily's garden today and discover how many mysteries and romances one garden can hold please download lily's garden from the link in my description or use the QR code, it helps our channel out immensely and is greatly appreciated. Liz then asked Kalani if she's talking to any other guy right now because she previously told Liz that she blocked Dallas, the guy that she had the hall pass with. However, now she unblocked him because Oswello is messaging other people and deleting the threads, or so she thinks. So there's no point in her being loyal to him if he's not being loyal to her. And it's also worth mentioning that at this point, Oswello is unaware that his wife unblocked Dallas. Who is he? Like, why? <sighs> So his name Can is... just acknowledge something? <laughs> That's the biggest smile I've seen on your face. <laughs> like you so lit much. up right now and... <laughs> Kalani's a 35 year old mother of two that's acting like a love struck teenager right now. This isn't rocket science, Kalani. If Dallas makes you happy because he treats you better than Oswello, and Oswello's brought you nothing but misery, then break up with Oswello, leave the resort with your children, and date Dallas. Also, food for thoughts moving forward. Don't involve your kids in your relationship bullshit. It's not fair to them. So his name is Dallas. Dallas. I've known him for like only two months. But we like Dallas. We like Dallas. He's very <laughs> very 
sweet. But we like Dallas. Well, any guy's gonna be better than Asuelo, Liz. He's a moron. This is so cringe. She's obviously putting Dallas on a pedestal because she has no dating experience whatsoever. Kalani lost her virginity to Asuelo. She got knocked up by Asuelo. She spent from 29 years of age to 35 with Asuelo. That is all she's known. So now she's known this Dallas guy for two months and she's already trying to jump ship and start a relationship with him. That screams codependency, if anything. He's like the first guy I've ever dated that actually reciprocates what I do, like communication, feelings, like doing things for each other. <laughs> because she was with Asuelu, the bar is set so low, y'all. This just seems like anything any normal guy in a relationship would do if he liked the girl that he was in a relationship with. When you get out of a long relationship, there's nothing wrong with taking some time to think about what you did wrong in that relationship, how you want to hold yourself, who you want to attract in your life. What are the qualities that you're looking for in a partner? Do I pick the person that I have kids with? that I've had to work so hard to even be kind of friends? Or do I pick the person who came out of nowhere and made me actually believe that, you know, there are nice guys out there. Oh, whatever. Here's the thing, Kalani. We can all tell that you already made your decision before you went on this TV show with Asuelu. You chose Dallas, which is understandable, but I wish you weren't such a sneaky cancer about it. And I'm going to elaborate more on that later because we have a lot to review in this episode. The next cast members we see are Joby and Yara. They're about to have a therapy session and Joby's mother is included in that session as well, which I find incredibly inappropriate that the therapist thought it was a good idea to share intimate personal things between this couple with Jovi's mom. It's not fair that his mother's included, but Yara's mother isn't included. There are certain issues in a relationship that should be between the two people in that relationship and no outsiders. And it's not fair that Jovi gets to have his support system and Yara doesn't get hers. With boys, your mom is your biggest fan. She's always going to have your back or be more inclined to defend you and stick up for you. So that's not fair to your wife. And why wouldn't you want your mom mom and your wife to get along, those can be separate relationships. Joby says to the audience, when we did our therapy intakes, there was an option to do family therapy, so I chose that option because my mom is such a big part of our life, especially when we make big decisions. Well, that's not very masculine, Joby. You're 33 years old, but you still need mommy's help to make big decisions. If I was Yara, that would be such a turnoff. The therapist is the past life regression lady, so we know where this is headed, guys. Sockless maidens, take my coin, dance on my face while the bard plays winches and pets and don't tell my wife. Yara turns to Jovi and says, of course you want your mom there, Jovi, so that she can take your side in all the arguments. And when she says this, Jovi gives her a really pressed look. Yara's funny for calling Jovi out like this. She goes on to say that Jovi will often tell his mother things before he tells Yara. And he also shares a lot of intimate details about their relationship that she would rather not have her mother-in-law know. Normally, I wouldn't just express all my emotions about my marriage to my mother or anyone else, but... Wouldn't you? <laughs> I think you express everything. What was that? Wouldn't he? Yeah, like, he called her for everything. Mama's boy. The therapist then brings up the birth control incident, which stresses Yara out because now she has to have an uncomfortable conversation with her mother-in-law that raised a man-child. Yara tells Mrs. Gwen, aka Jovi's mom, what happened. After communicating with Jovi multiple times that she doesn't want to have another kid right now, Jovi keeps trying to get her pregnant, so she went on birth control and didn't tell him about that. Why didn't you tell him that? Because, Mrs. Wynn, you know, I'm not ready for a second baby right now, and I tell him that every single day. I know you've made that clear, but getting on birth control without telling him, that's a horrible thing to hide from your husband. Wow, what's the other option, Mrs. Gwen, getting pregnant? Is it her body, but your son's choice? You would think that Mrs. Gwen would have more sympathy for Yara's situation because one month her son is with her and the other month he's on a business trip and not at home. She has to watch the kid by herself. Like, why would you want to have another kid with someone that's not home? So that's not fair that he wants to stick her with a second kid and still keep his same job where he's not gonna be there for months out of the year. A few months ago, I got a job offer um, to work closer to home to be home more. How does that even make sense, man? You tell your mommy about this job offer, but not the girl that's watching your kid while you're on a work trip. You're supposed to be leveling up together. But I didn't take it, and I didn't want to bring it up to Yara because I know she wouldn't understand. What's not to understand, Jovi? You're a selfish partner. Don't make it complicated when it's not. So you have the offer to work at closest to home, but you refuse this? 
Yeah. The pay was same, the benefits were the same. The only difference was that you would be in an office and you'd be able to spend more time with your family. You passing up on this opportunity really just shows where you're at in life because that was a chance for you to make a sacrifice for your relationship to make your partner's life easier and you didn't. The therapist then asked Joby if it occurred to him that if he took that job and was closer to home, Yara would be more inclined to have another child with him. And then this is his response to that. It occurred to me and I thought about it and I talked to my mom about it and I just didn't feel like it was the right choice for me to make, so I didn't take it. How will the future look different if trust is not established now? What will the not, relationship look like? Not good. No, not good. The relationship will in fact not look good if there is no trust established in it. Good thing the therapist is there. Cutting to Ed, Liz, Kalani, and Oswello going to the Sunset Grill. I looked up the Yelp, and according to the reviews, the food and drinks are mid, but the location is great. Which is excellent because we don't want TLC to spoil the creatures too much now, do we? Liz and I decided to ask the other couples out to go get drinks. I'm not surprised that these two are looking for any excuse to get drunk. It's very on brand for them. But whatever they've been doing the past couple episodes has been working because they've been less annoying. The creatures sit down and they order the creature meal, which of course comes with chips and queso, chicken wings, some kind of fucked up hot pocket situation, and coconut shrimp. Joby and Yara arrive late, but he's Frowny McFrownerton right now, so the other cast members can pick up that something's wrong. Hello. Hello. Joby, why do you look sad? Joby. Toby. You okay? How are you? Do I really look that sad? Yeah. Two seconds later. Yeah, so we did a therapy session with my mom today. Oh. And Jovi continues to break the circle of trust. It's really none of their business, dude. Whenever Jovi has to sit with an uncomfortable feeling, he turns to alcohol, so he goes to the bar to order more drinks. Meanwhile, Angela turns to everyone and says, hey, let's go play some games to lighten up the mood. I feel like my problems are a lot smaller than yours right now. Like it's stuff because the, everything that happened because of me and she's struggling for killing me. At least Oswello can admit it. That's a step in the right direction. He goes on to say, look at Kalani. She's so beautiful. I can't believe I messed this up. Oswello then says to the audience that he doesn't know if Kalani wants a divorce, but he doesn't think she's in love with him anymore. Trust me, bro. If I'm lying, I'm dying. She's disgusted with you. And you can tell by how after you drained that shot in Cornhole, you went to hug her and she made this face. I feel warm. Hug me like you love me. Molly shows up by herself and all the other cast members are thinking, where's Kelly? So they all sit down and Molly tells them the news that Kelly left the resort. He's gone. <gasps> I just really thought it was my turn. You know what I mean? Like, it was really my turn. Hey, Molly, maybe it'd be your turn to find love if you stopped beating up the dudes that you entered relationships with. And the thing about my mom is she was violent with Louise. She's been violent with Sam. Yeah, she was violent with multiple ex-boyfriends that I can remember. If you say something she doesn't like to hear, um, she'll she'll punch you. She'll literally punch you in the face. You was hoping that y'all had a chance for me? I did because, you know, I'm 47 years old, man. I don't want to keep doing this freaking rodeo, right? No, 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 no. That's exactly what you want, Molly, because your money is reliant on going on this show. If you don't go on TLC spinoff shows and rip the clout from that, use that as an opportunity to promote your shitty lingerie, how are you going to move product? You're not. The funniest part about it is Molly ratted on herself. She said herself that she's at the height of her career. Career. And during many therapy sessions on the show, she brought that up because that was one of her excuses for why she can't be in a relationship with Kelly, even though she knew in advance that he was retiring. I'm not going to stay either. I'm going to go home because this was supposed to be for us as couples. Oh, wow. Would you look at the time? I'm not even wearing a watch, but I think that Molly should probably leave the resort now and stop trying to get sympathy from everybody because she might be late for dinner with her prison boo. Molly says to the audience that it would be awkward for her to stay at the resort without Kelly because then she would feel like the ninth wheel. She got to have the last word and control the narrative, so she feels like it's time for her to get back to her daily routine of ruining men's lives and selling shitty lingerie. Molly says, and what I learned from this retreat is that I'm never going to give up on love, but I'm not going to give in to the wrong love. Oh, Oh shit, Molly's dropping quotes. Well, I got a quote for her from Carla Grimes. The narcissist paints a picture of themselves as being the victim or innocent in all aspects. They will be offended by the truth. What is done in the dark will come to light. Time has a way of showing people's true colors. All the creatures huddle up for a group hug to give to Molly and Ed says, we love you, baby, which he loses points for that. The next morning, something very interesting happens. We see Oswello and he says that he can't find Kalani anywhere. She said, having a breakfast. And I say, where? 
and uh, she didn't tell me. As well as Spidey's senses are tingling, he can tell that something's not right right now. And you know, he went on the show with Kalani because she said it was necessary for them to give it one last chance to repair their relationship. But right now he feels like it's all for nothing. Next cast member we see is Molly finally leaving the resort. I'm genuinely curious why the network gave her as much screen time as they did. It was super unnecessary. I'm a damn good girlfriend. <laughs> Molly thinks she's a good girlfriend after watching you on multiple seasons and multiple spinoffs of TLC shows. We know you're not a good girlfriend. You give no heels. There's not one feminine bone in your body and your daughter's already outed your relationship history. Molly gets in the car and as she's driving away, she opens up her big grouper mouth for one last time to say, love isn't always patient. Love isn't always kind. Listen, don't preach anything to us. No one is gonna take life advice from you, you're a failure. Next cast member we see is Kalani. She's back in her hotel room at the resort. Her sister comes to visit and says, where were you? Aswell has been worried sick. Last night, my sister went off the property and just spent the night somewhere else. I can love the boys and be around them and give them what they need, but I also need to give myself what I need. Yeah. Oh, that's so rich from Kalani. You got your husband and your children at this resort, but you left in the middle of the night to be a sneak and go out and fuck another dude. And now you want to come back and pretend like everything's fine. It's not fine. You're dirty for that. Her sister Kalini, on the other hand, is a real one because she tells her that she should tell Oswello the truth. And when her sister says this, Kalani responds that she has to sort out her feelings first. You're past the point of sorting out your feelings when you leave the resort to fuck another dude. And you know what's the funny thing about Kalani? She is setting a false narrative, just like Molly, just like a lot of the other people do on this show. Because she's stringing Oswello along and that's all this is. Kalani goes on to later tell the girls that she unblocked Dallas and then he flew out to Miami within one day. Dallas works as a security guard in California, one of the most expensive states to live in. So you expect us to believe that you blocked him throughout the entire stay at this resort. You unblocked him within one day. He booked a flight and a hotel, took time off work to come out and see you. And this wasn't premeditated. This wasn't booked in advance. Yeah, right. If you got some spare change, check out our Your Wet merch. If you want some one-on-one -on -one time with me, please order a cameo. I'm the number one cameo creator in the entire world. Super thankful that y'all watch my content. Comment below, subscribe. Let's be friend, let's be friend. Follow me on Twitch and on Instagram right now.